Today, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, we have Surah Jinn. It is a surah that has been revealed uh, regarding our brothers and sisters from the jinn and about their world and their experiences. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about them in great detail in this surah, tells us about what was going through their minds, what happened to them, what sort of life they lead, what are the challenges that they face, what are the misconceptions that they held, and then thereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to direct them and guide them towards a particular path of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of obeying the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And if they do not do so, then it may be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not respond to them in the best of ways and that they might become the people of the, of the fire. This surah was revealed at a very, very special time. The Prophet ﷺ was very distressed after the death of his wife and after the death of Abu Talib, which all happened in the same year, Amul Huzn, right? It's the year of distress for the Prophet ﷺ. So what did Rasulullah do? He thought that perhaps if Quraysh is not going to listen to me, then people around Quraysh, around Makkah will listen to me. So where did he go? He went off to Ta'if, thinking that perhaps the people of Ta'if would respond favorably to his message. However, he stayed there for three days and three nights. But what did the people do? They pelted him with stones. They swore at him. They had their children take out all the dirt in their homes. And they pelted Muhammad Wasallam until the Prophet Wasallam was chased out of Ta'if with his feet bleeding. And then what happened? The Prophet Wasallam went a little bit outside of Ta'if and came down to a tree, a date palm tree where he rested. At that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him, as you know the story, that Jibreel والسلام, came down with the angel of the two mountains and said, Ya Rasulullah, if you wish, I will destroy them between these two mountains, destroy the people of Ta'if. And the Prophet وسلم, made the dua, no, rather, I wish that a people will come from them who will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afterwards. But what is amazing is what happened whilst the Prophet وسلم, was sitting under the tree. What happened was two things happened. Number one was a Christian slave that belonged to two of the non-Muslims who was a Christian slave came to Muhammad uh, He tended to the wounds of Muhammad وسلم, his wounds that he had on his legs and on his body. And at that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this Christian man accept Islam. The second thing is nightfall came. When the sun came down and the nightfall came, then all the jinn that were of, around that valley all came to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam recited "Iqra bismi Rabbi kaladi khalaq to them. The surah which he recited was Surah Alaq, and this is the incident that happened. "Qul uhiya ilayha ilayya anna hustama nafar min al jinni, fakalu inna sami'na Quran an ajaba." So, Ekhuti, the jinn are a creation that Allah subhanahu wa taala has created, along with. Muslimi jinn were created even before insan was created. How do we know this? Well, because when Adam was created, alayhi wasalam, then he was asked to all the people to prostrate, and of course Iblis decided not to prostrate. He was from the jinn, and he disbelieved in the command of his Lord. So we know that therefore a large number of jinn are actually kuffar. In an authentic narration, which is in a Tabarani and others, it is reported that every single time one human being is born. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows one child of Iblis to be born as well. So for every single human being, there is one shaitan. However, we, we all have five angels. So Ikhwati, the jinn were created from a smokeless fire as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Rahman. And they are an entity that can take multiple forms. And indeed, they get married as well. And they can have children too. The Prophet sallallahu said, Verily, shaitan flows in the body of a human being, the flowing of blood. So constrict upon him by fasting. Authentic hadith, which is in Sahih Muslim. So we know that Rasulullah told us that jinns have an effect on our bodies. They have an effect on our emotions, on our mannerism. Uh, and no doubt, a lot of the problems that we face today are due to uh, the influence of the jinn uh, on our body. 
However, what we also know is that that which decreases the influence on our body and the ability to cause harm to us is to recite the Quran and to increase in our own taqwa and our practice of Islam. It is also reported that multiple jinns can possess a human being at the same time. The evil eye is also the effects of the jinn as well. However, rest assured that just like they can see us in this dunya, Ibn al-Qayyim says in his Nuniya that we will be able to see them and they will not be able to see us in the Akhirah. Let's continue on and take the surah, the seal of Surah Jinn. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah, the, the one who is generally merciful to everything that is created, the one who is specifically merciful to believers. Qul, say, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tell the believers and tell the people who read the Quran. Uhiya ilayya, it has been revealed to me, annahu stama'a, that the following group of beings have heard me. Annahu stama'a, nafarun min al jinn, a group of jinn have heard me <coughs> reciting the Quran. Faqalu, so they said, inna sami'na Quranan ajaba. Verily, we have heard a most tremendous Quran, a very amazing recitation. Quran means that which is recited. It guides to that which is upright, so we have believed in it. And we will not associate any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ultimate purpose of the Quran is Tawheed. Ibn Qayyim says the Quran guides to the Tawheed in four ways the Quran guides to Tawheed. How? Number one are those verses where Allah orders people to, to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you to worship only, only one God. Number two, the Quran tells you about the stories of the people of Tawheed, which are the stories of the prophets of God, the stories of uh, their people and how they believed, right? And their stories. Number three, it tells you about the stories of those people who disbelieved in, in Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number four, is all those rules and regulations where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you to do certain obli obligatory things which is to do with branches of Tawheed and high above is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he did not take a partner nor has he ever taken a son now we know that indeed the foolish people amongst us, the foolish jinn amongst us used to say about him shatata, doubtful matters, ignorant sayings, wrong statements, that which is far removed from the truth. We were naive. We thought that jinn and mankind will never ever lie about Allah. And this is the problem today. Realize this that the vast majority of those, if you were to ask them, they would not speak the truth about Allah. People around you do not want good for you. People around you do not want you to go to Jannah. There used to be rijalum minal ins, some men from human beings. Ya'udhun, they used to seek refuge. Bi rijalim minal jinn with a group of the jinn فَزَادُوهُمْ رَحَقًا So they increased them in nothing but fear. The tafsir of this verse reports that Ibn Abbas who said that when the people of the Quraysh and the people of the Arabian Peninsula before Islam, when they used to go past a valley and when they came to a valley and they wanted to encamp there, so they used to say, I seek refuge in the Sayyid or the Lord of this valley from all his other men meaning all the other hidden jinns and spirits, etc. So the jinns start feeling really great. And so they used to zaduhum rahaqa. So they used to start whispering in their ears and they used to cause eerie sounds in the middle of the night in the depths of the valley from which this, the men would be even more afraid. They used to seek refuge in not but Allah, but in the jinn. If you seek refuge in Allah, Allah increases you in peace. And if you seek refuge in anyone other than Allah, they only increase you in fear. And they thought, as we thought, that indeed Allah will not send anyone at all. So, why are the jinn saying this? Why did they think that no one will be sent? Because 
all of the prophets of God were human beings. They were never jinns. So why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose every single prophet from human beings? And that is how Allah has blessed the children of Adam. And just like our days of the past, or just like we used to do in the past, we went up to the sky, so we tried to seek out the knowledge of what is going to happen from the sky. Meaning, they went up to the heavens and they tried to listen to what the angels were whispering to each other about what is going to happen tomorrow and the qadr that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to decree. فَوَجَدْنَاهَا مُلِئَتْ حَرَسًا شَدِيدًا وَشُهُبًا So now we have found, meaning after the coming of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have found that now it is muli'at harasan. It is full of haras. Haras means guards. So the sky is full of angels that are guardians, guardian guarding the heavens. So, they, so the jinn are no longer able to go up and listen. And also they, have, they actually are throwing at the, at the jinn, which are these balls of fire. And we used to take a place in order to hear, just like we used to do before, and then tell the soothsayers, so whoever tries to do that now, then indeed he will find shihab al-rasada. Before the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the soothsayers had a lot of lies and truth mixed up. But after the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa no more. It's all lies. وَأَنَّا لَا نَدْرِي أَشَرٌ أُرِيدَ بِمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَمْ أَرَادَ بِهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ رَشَدًا Ibn Zayd, one of the scholars of Tafsir, said that this is a statement that was made by Iblis. That when Iblis saw that the time of Muhammad وسلم, is near and that uh, no longer the jinn can go up and listen anymore to the stories of what is going to be revealed, what is going to happen, then Iblis started to spread tales and lies about Allah. And this is what he said Man, you guys don't know anymore. Is, does God want good for you or does God want evil for you all? No more, because now you can't even go up now anymore. So he started spreading these rumors amongst the jinn, amongst the, uh, the jinn, the good jinn. And so they said, Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by stopping us from hearing the stories and the news of the heavens, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want evil for the people of this earth? Or does Allah want rashada, meaning guidance and hidayah? And that is how now they understand that. Yes, now we know that Allah wanted khair. But Allah wanted khair through us listening to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَأَنَّا مِنَّا الصَّالِحُونَ وَمِنَّا دُونَ ذَلِكْ كُنَّا طَرَائِقَ قِدَادًا The jinn are saying, telling about the story. Amongst us are the salihun, amongst us are the righteous jinn. وَمِنَّا دُونَ ذَلِكْ And amongst us are those who are not righteous, meaning they are the shayateen. كُنَّا طَرَائِقَ قِدَادًا We are, qidada means multiple, taraik means different tribes, multiple types. And we know, we know of a surety. We will not ever escape the power of Allah on this earth. And we will not escape him by running away from him. How powerful are the jinn? What did the jinn say to Prophet Sulaiman? What did he tell him? He will get the throne, which is how many thousand kilometers? Two thousand kilometers at the blink of an eye, isn't it? How mighty, how powerful is that? Subhanallah. Even then, they know that they cannot escape the power of Allah. And when we heard the Quran, we have believed in it. So whoever believes in his Lord, فَلَا يَخَافُ بَخْسًا وَلَا رَحَقًا Then he will never ever fear بَخْس وَلَا رَحَقًا Take his wealth away or destroy him. Nor should he ever ever fear that Allah will mistreat him and harm him. وَأَنَّا مِنَّا الْمُسْلِمُونَ وَمِنَّا الْقَاسِطُونَ And from us indeed are those who submit to Allah are Muslimin. And from us are those who are qasitun, those people who transgress the limits, the sinners. فَمَنْ أَسْلَمَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ تَحَرَّوا رَشَدَا Indeed, he who has submitted, he is the one who has taken the path of rushd or guidance. 
الْقَاسِطُونَ As for the sinners, the Qasitun, فَكَانُوا لِجَهَنَّمَ حَطَبًا Then they will be the fuel for Jahannam. وَأَلَّوْ اِسْتَقَامُوا عَلَى الطَّرِيقَةِ لَأَسْقَيْنَاهُمْ مَا أَنْ غَدَقَا And if only Allah says, so this is Allah speaking, if they were only to be steadfast upon the path, لَأَسْقَيْنَاهُمْ I would have given them to drink مَا أَنْ غَدَقَا Water in, in countless measure. لِنَفْتِنَهُمْ فِي However, we have, we have given them a choice in order to test them. وَمَنْ يُعْرِدْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ رَبِّهِ and, who, and whoever turns away from the remembrance of his Lord, يَسْلُكُ عَذَابًا صَعَدًا Then he will take him, meaning his Lord will take him towards a adab, a punishment sa'ada, which will only increase. وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Indeed, the masajid are for Allah. So do not call upon anyone other than Allah. Meaning what? Meaning at the time of salah, they are all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do not call upon jinn, do not call upon shaitan for help, do not call upon anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for help. وَأَنَّهُ لَمَّا قَامَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ يَدْعُوهُ كَادُوا يَكُونُونَ عَلَيْهِ لِبَدًا And when the slave of Allah, who is the slave of Allah? Muhammad So when the slave of Allah stood in order to يَدْعُوهُ Call them to the path كَادُوا يَكُونُونَ عَلَيْهِ لِبَدًا كَادُوا Meaning they were almost يَكُونُونَ عَلَيْهِ They were almost about to لِبَدًا You did it, no you did it, no 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 you did it, no you did it And then you know how people start congregating around and when they all come, they want to just jump on top of each other. They want to listen to really what's happening, right? And that's exactly what libada means. وَأَنَّهُ لَمَّا قَامَ عَبُدُ اللَّهِ And when the Muhammad Sallallahu started to recite the Quran to them and call them to the path, they started to hurdle around until they were all about to crouch on top of each other, about to fall on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and crush him. Ya <laughs> khuti, are you also eager to listen to the Quran and the Tafsir and eager to listen to his Sunnah? We should be, ya khuti, because look how the jinn were. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَدْعُوا رَبِّي وَلَا أُشْرِكُ بِهِ أَحَدًا Say to them, O Muhammad Wasallam. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the last part of the surah jinn, tells the Prophet Wasallam to tell the jinn and the jinn, jinn world the following points of advice. What is the points of advice? Number one, say O Muhammad to them, that indeed, إِنَّمَا أَدْعُوا رَبِّي I worship Allah, I only call upon Allah. وَلَا أُشْرِكُ بِهِ أَحَدًا And I do not associate anyone in partners with him. قُلْ إِنِّي لَا أَمْلِكُ لَكُمْ ذَرًّا وَلَا رَشَدًا Say, Muhammad says to them, I do not have any power or authority to cause you any good or any harm. قُلْ إِنِّي لَنْ يُجِيرَنِي مِنَ اللَّهِ أَحَدٌ وَلَنْ أَجِدَ مِنْ دُونِهِ مُلْتَحَدًا Say, meaning no one can save me from Allah's punishment. وَلَنْ أَجِدَ مِنْ دُونِهِ مُلْتَحَدًا Nor can I ever find a escape away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam could not find a safety from Allah or from His punishment. What about us, ya khuti? Illa balagham min Allahi wa risalati. Meaning, except that my message, my responsibility is to only transmit to you the message from Allah. Wa risalati and His message, which is the Quran. Wa man yaasillaha wa rasulahu. Whoever disobeys Allah and His messenger, fa inna lahu nara jahannam. For him is the fire of jahannam. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا He will reside therein forever. حَتَّى إِذَا رَأَوْ مَا يُعَدُونَ Until they have seen what they, they, what they were promised. فَسَيَعْلَمُونَ مَنْ أَضْعَفُ نَاصِرًا وَأَقَلُّ عَدَدًا Until when the people enter the Jahannam and they know that this is what they have been promised, they will know مَنْ أَضْعَفُ نَاصِرًا Who amongst us is the weakest in helpers? وَأَقَلُّ عَدَدًا And least in army, in the number of army. قُلْ إِنْ أَدْرِي أَقَرِيبُ مَا تُعَدُونَ Say, O Muhammad Wasallam, if you don't listen and you want to put off repentance and accepting Islam for another time, then know this. Say, say O Muhammad Wasallam, verily, I don't know. لَا أَدْرِي أَقَرِيبُ مَا تُعَدُونَ Is it what you have been promised, which is the day of judgment, Jahannam, is it close? أَمْ يَجْعَلُ لَهُ رَبِّي أَمَدًا Or will my Lord, was there, or is there a long way to go before Allah will take you to account? You don't know. عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ فَلَا يُظْهِرُ عَلَىٰ غَيْبِهِ أَحَدًا He is the knower of the unseen and he does not tell about the unseen world أَحَدًا to anyone إِلَّا مَنِ ارْتَضَى مِنْ رَسُولٍ Except for 
a messenger that he wishes to tell him about the unseen world. Never from the jinn. Because jinn will never ever be an angel and jinn will never ever be from the messengers. Correct? But he does reveal to either a human being or he will reveal to a, an angel what he wills from the hidden world. So what he does is that he reveals to that human being something from the unseen world but at the same time he puts in front of him and behind him meaning guards. What does it mean? It means that when Allah is revealing the Quran or Allah is revealing a knowledge of the unseen world to the, one of the prophets or to an angel, Allah puts other angels as guards so that none of the jinn or any of the shayateen can ever hear that. So that everyone knows that this message has been delivered. And that indeed Allah has, Allah has indeed encompassed them with knowledge. And he has taken every single to, to account, point by point, piece by piece, person by person. He knows every single thing in that detail.